Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to my channel. Uh, my name is Shay, if you didn't already know. If you are new to my channel, welcome. Um, if you are visiting back to my channel, once again, welcome back. I'm so glad to have all of you guys here at my channel. And yeah, I'm very excited. So if a lot of you don't already know, um, I love Disney. I love all things Disney. Um, but one of my favorite things to do when I go to the parks is to actually play this certain game um, that is only in Magic Kingdom. It's only in Florida, but I love playing it. Um, I learned about it during my program back in 2017 and I just kind of fell in love with it and I fell in love with collecting and everything like that. Um, so this game is honestly a lot of fun. So if you, do, if you don't already know what I'm talking about, I am talking about Sorcerers of the Magic Kingdom. So if you don't know what this game is, it is essentially an interactive game revolving around you going around Magic Kingdom trying to defeat the villains, um, mostly Hades. So essentially what the game is about or what it revolves around is Hades essentially wants to take over the Magic Kingdom. He wants to essentially make it his second home. So he enlists Pain and Panic to go and steal the Magic Crystal, which in turn ends up it shattering into eight different pieces. So essentially what happens is you go right here. You go to the firehouse that's right at the beginning of the park and you can go in and if you haven't started a game before, they walk you through everything. So you'll have to scan your magic band or even just like your park ticket if you don't have a magic band. And then they ask if you've ever played and if you haven't, they walk you through the entire process, which is super nice. And that's kind of like your starting point. But if you have played before, all you can do is you just go in to the fire department and you tell them, hey, I wanna get my location for the day or I wanna keep playing a game that I already have going right now. And then all they'll do is they'll set the game up, you'll get going, and then they'll give you a pack of cards, which will have your sorcerer's cards in there. There's usually only about five in there and they're always randomized cards. One thing that is super nice is during every holiday, so whether that be Halloween, Christmas, but they always have different holiday cards. So there's ones like these where there's, um, this one is Goofy's Festive Fiasco. Um, this one is Rover's Christmas Carousel of Progress. So this is the little dog from Carousel of Progress. And then this last one is the Phantasmal Fireworks Flash. So this is from the Halloween party uh, last year, I believe. The ones that you're always gonna get in the packs is always gonna be different ones. So there's 70 that you can choose that you can choose from throughout the entire game, but you're always collecting, you're always getting different ones. Now there are ones that are essentially called like lightning cards and those are 10 extra cards that you can buy in the parks. So in Magic Kingdom, they're actually gonna look like this, but what you do is they're like $14.99 I believe. So in total, there are 70 cards and each time you go into the firehouse, there's always gonna be a different randomized set of cards that you're gonna get. So these are what are called spell cards. So each card is gonna do a different spell. There's always different things that you can do and each one is gonna do something completely different. At the bottom of each card, there's gonna be a number. So it'll say one out of 70 or 12 out of 70, whatever it is. So one through 22 are gonna be what's called rare star cards. 23 through 40 are gonna be the most common called crescent moon cards. 41 through 60 are gonna be the most common planet cards. And then the rarest cards are gonna be 61 through 70 and those are called lightning cards. So each one, there's different categories and each has like a different strength or like a different level of power essentially. So throughout all of these cards, there's gonna be seven different ways of attacking and there's also gonna be nine different classes of spells. So they're all gonna be very different with what they can do, but some of them might do similar things attacking wise, or they might have a special, like a certain level that like another card would have. But one of the really cool things that you can do, so typically you would only use one card at a time to defeat your opponent. What you can do is you can actually use up to seven cards at one time 
to create a bigger impact towards your opponent to try and defeat them. So if you have a lot of friends that are playing or you're with your family, you can always, each one of you can grab a card and you can try and defeat them with a different spell or the same spell or whatever it is, but you can always do it at the same time, which is super nice. Now, there's a thing with the lightning cards that is kind of tricky. So typically you would have to buy like the board game. So there's a board game that you can buy in the Emporium and it would have one of the lightning cards along with a bunch of like the regular other cards and it would still be the same pack of five but you would end up getting what is like the board game. I've never played the board game, but you would get one of those lightning cards. You can't actually get the lightning cards when you go to the firehouse. There's also another way for you to be able to get the lightning cards without actually having to buy them. So a lot of people that do have complete collections have a lot and a lot of Magic Kingdom cards. So they'll usually trade. Um, one of the things at least that I have seen is if you want to get a lightning card, you want to trade 10 of these. So a good thing that is going to happen when you are collecting these cards is you are going to have a big collection of duplicates. So I have a lot of the same cards. Most of them, I have at least four to five of the same ones because those are the more common cards that you can get in your packs. So one little tip that I will say is yes, you can register or like sign up to play at the Main Street Firehouse, but if you're already in the park and you already wanna play, but you don't wanna walk up to the front, there is a little spot over by the Ye Old Christmas Shop, which is gonna be in Liberty Square. And it's gonna be right around that area and you can sign up to play. The only thing with that is if it is your first time playing, they don't have any practice portals there for you to like try out and see how to actually do it. So if it is your first time playing, I would recommend saying that you do go to the Main Street Firehouse because then you know exactly what you're doing, how to do it and how everything works. So when you go into the firehouse or into the area over by the Yield Christmas shop, they will ask if you're new or if you're continuing your game, whatever it is, they will give you your pack of cards and they will also give you a map. So that map shows you every location that there is that you will need to go to throughout the game. So when they start your game, they're gonna tell you to go to a specific spot. And it'll either be something that'll say like a fox or a wave or wherever it is. And then once you start to look for it, you have to look for this symbol, okay? This is the, like the Sorcerers of the Magic Kingdom symbol, and that is essentially where each portal is going to be. So let's say they tell you to go to the fox. I know the fox is in Adventureland, and I know if I'm walking around, I know, okay, it's over by this ride or this show, wherever it is. All I have to do is look for that symbol on the ground, and once I see it, I can go tap my magic band and then I can just, it'll pop up with exactly where I'm at and then I can use whatever card I choose to defeat whichever villain I'm gonna defeat and then it'll give me my next location after that. So once you get through the entire game, okay, and you defeat Hades and you're done, you can go back to the firehouse and they will give you another set of cards, okay? And then if you, let's say you want to keep playing and you want to go on to the next level or you want to do whatever it is, they will actually ask if you want to stay at your level of difficulty or if you want to start completely over. So essentially what it is, is you could go through the entire level, you could beat Hades, have everything done, and then you could move on to a more challenging level. So let's say that the first level was way too easy. You wanted something more challenging, you wanted something a little bit more difficult, kind of like make you think a little bit, you can tell the cast member once you are completely done with that game. So like I said earlier, whether you are starting a game or you are continuing a game, they will always give you a pack of cards, right? So whenever you get that pack of cards, you're also gonna get a map. So whenever you get that map, you're gonna have every single land or area that is gonna have those locations. So it has Adventureland, Frontierland, Fantasyland, Main Street USA and Liberty Square. Those are all of the places that you can play Sorcerers of the Magic Kingdom. 
it's not in Tomorrowland. I will say that that's the only land that Sorcerers is not in. When you get your map and open it up, it's going to have Adventureland, Frontierland, and Liberty Square, Fantasyland, and Main Street USA. Okay, those are the only lands that you can actually play Sorcerers in. When you actually go to start playing, they'll give you your starting location and then you will go find that location. Each land or each area essentially will have five different locations, but you won't start and go through all of Adventureland and then go to Frontierland. You will be bounced around the entire park. So let's say you start in Adventureland and you go and defeat whichever villain it is, they will give you a location say in like Fantasyland or on Main Street or Liberty Square. So I will put some of the pictures right here of some of the different locations to kind of show you what they look like. There is also going to be a keyhole on each, like right underneath each portal. So it'll kind of look like this. So it'll be, most of them kind of look like windows essentially, like they look like window displays. Now, this is kind of gonna be a trickier thing. So sometimes, let's say you're playing this card, it'll ask you to actually use this side. So then you'll be facing this symbol, so the Sorcerers of the Magic Kingdom symbol, you'll actually be facing this towards the screen. So this is kind of like a spell in and of itself. So it doesn't happen every single time, but every once in a while you will be asked to just use this side. Now, I'm not saying that every card will always defeat a villain. Like I said earlier, you can always double, you can always double up on your cards. So let's say you want to use Apprentice Mickey's Broomstick and you also want to use Buzz Lightyear's Astro Blasters. You can always hold both of those up to try and defeat them as well. Sometimes you might need a little extra help and that might be when this comes into play, okay? You never really know, so you kind of have to be ready for anything. Like I said earlier, you are also going to get your holiday cards, okay? Holiday cards are always gonna do different things, but if you ever want to get a holiday card, make sure that you actually get a holiday ticket. So whether that be to the Halloween party or the Christmas party, you have to have a party ticket in order to get these because if you don't already know, Christmas parties and Halloween parties are ticketed events, okay? They are only giving, given out during the Halloween party or during the Christmas party. Unless there are people that go to the parties multiple times, they get their cards and then they trade them. I know that was how I got this one. To be honest, I have never been to a Mickey's Not So Scary Halloween party. I know you are all gasping right now. Um, I have never been, but I'm hoping this is the year that I finally get to go. I actually got that card based on trading with a family because they were looking for some specific cards and they were looking for multiples, but I had them in my duplicates and I was more than happy to give them to them just to give them. I wasn't looking to trade, but she decided to give me and one of my friends these Halloween cards because they had multiples of these. I think they had like three or four of these but they were super nice and they traded two of them for the ones that I gave them. I think I gave them like five or six cards. So you never know. If you know people that play these, heck, have them get you a party card. For the most part, Sorcerers of the Magic Kingdom is a very simple game to play. It is very fun if you're just looking to have a very chill day in the parks, you don't really wanna go on a lot of rides or see a lot of shows, you just kind of wanna be there. Um, this is honestly a really great game to play. I will say this game is a little time consuming. So like I said, if you want to play it, make sure that you are taking out a big chunk of your day to be able to play it if you want to get all the way through the game. I wanna know if you guys play Sorcerers of the Magic Kingdom. So let me know down in the comments if you have ever played it or if you've ever even heard of it. Because I know for me personally, I love this game. I know I go to Disney a lot just to hang out, maybe, you know, sit on the hub grass, not really do anything. So this is honestly a very fun game to do if I just want to have a very relaxed day. But yeah, make sure to let me know down in the comments if you also play this game or if you've ever even heard of it. If you guys also have any questions about Sorcerers of the Magic Kingdom, make sure to also leave that down in the comments below because I would love to be able to answer them. And if there's honestly anyone who ever wants to go and play Sorcerers once the parks do reopen, 
please let me know um, because I love it and I would love to be able to show more people who either have not played or people who maybe don't know a lot about it. I'd love to be able to show them more about this game. While you are at it, make sure to follow me on Instagram, Snapchat, Twitter, and TikTok because I'm always on it. I'm always scrolling. So make sure to go and follow me. That's gonna be on the next screen that you guys will see. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you guys got some really good information and maybe you have some new plans for when you go back to the parks. Um, so again, make sure to let me know if you've ever played and if you have any questions about Sorcerers of the Magic Kingdom because I would love to answer them and I would love to find new sorcerers to go play with. So with that, I hope you guys enjoyed and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye guys.